And joining me once again for the Canadian Jewish News Daily is our treasure trove expert and columnist, David Matlow. Hello and welcome back. Hello, Ellen. Thanks for having me back. Today's episode will be fun with flags, as you <laughs> may know from the Big Bang Theory. Fun with flags. And I've got two behind me from the dollar store, but we're only talking, well, we might talk about the Canadian one as well, uh, but it's a lot older. Uh, the Israeli one is a lot older. Let's start, first of all, with what is the design of the flag that is used since 1948 and what does it symbolize? What are the, all the parts that are on it and what do they symbolize? So everyone would be familiar with the Israeli flag, two blue stripes and a star of David, Magen David in the middle, there are lots of stories about what the significance is of the flag. Some would say that the white is reflective of the priestly class and the date of the temple. The blue is the sky. Also the blue, the two blue stripes when David Wolfson in 1897 thought of a design of a flag, he said, our flag is already the talit. So this is reflective of the two uh, stripes of the talus, the Star of David, was not a historically Jewish symbol, um, but it started to, only a couple hundred years ago to represent Judaism as a counterpoint to the cross, which for theological reasons is tied to Christianity. And so the Star of David became over time one of the symbols, but not religious. It's not like the menorah or the lulav. Um, it is uh, historically uh, not a religious symbol, and that makes up our flag. All right, so we got to step back in time now. Um, how did we get to the flag that we have today? Where was the decision to start thinking about a flag? And obviously, because you're a Herzl expert, there's got to be Theodore Herzl and Zionism in here somewhere. There are a number of origin stories, as you might imagine, in Jewish life. There is a debate over everything, and so the origin of the flag, there's a debate about that. One of the claims to the origin of the flag is the community of Nestsiana, who claims that in 1885, they developed the first flag. It looks very similar, two blue stripes, a star of David, and the words Nestsiana on the flag. Another origin story comes from the city of Boston, where in 1891, a rabbi, Jacob Baruch Askwith, was asked to design some decorations for the Bnei Zion Hall and designed a flag which had two blue stripes, a Star of David, and in the Star of David, the word Maccabee in Hebrew. And in 1892, in a parade to celebrate the 400th anniversary of Christopher Columbus, that flag was flown for the first time in the streets of Boston. And instead of the Maccabee, the word Zion replaced it. And by 1897, at the first Zionist Congress, there was a flag that was flown or shown there, or at least described there. It wasn't shown until the second Congress in 1898. And that had the two blue stripes and the Star of David and the two blue stripes, David Wolfson, who was Herzl's successor as the leader of the Zionist movement, he takes credit for that, saying the two blue stripes come from the Talit. Herzl himself, he had two separate ideas for the flag. In his book, uh, The Judenstadt, which was published in 1896, and I'm reading from the first English translation, first edition, 1896, he says, I would suggest a white banner bearing seven golden stars. The white field symbolizes our pure new life, the seven stars, the seven golden hours of our working day. And that was one of Herzl's visions for the Jewish state, a seven hour working day. At the time, the average working day in Europe, Western Europe and in America was 10 or 11 hours. But Herzl wasn't satisfied with only one design for a flag. In 1899, he had a second idea for a flag. And this is um, something that it, I'm showing to the viewers and I'll describe it to those who are listening. It is Herzl's idea of the center of the flag, which would be a star of David, which would have seven little stars surrounding it, reflective of the seven hours of the workday and the lion of Judah, a lion in the middle. And a flag like this 
was shown at the Third Zionist Congress in 1899. Um, what they they had this, and there are different claims on which was the first, but um, eventually when the state of Israel, let's fast forward, was founded, um, what was the thing, what was the thinking and the worry of the founders about what kind of flag they were going to have? I know in our previous treasure shows, you talked a bit about, you know, the name of the country and the stamps. Right. And now we have to have another more important symbol, which is the flag. What was the thinking and controversy? So by, so by 1904 or so, the ideas, even though there were variations, congealed upon the idea of the, what became the Zionist flag. And this is a picture that I'm showing. This is the Zionist flag flying at the 1904 World's Fair in St. Louis. That's the first time that flag flew publicly. And even though there were a number of variations, by 1948, that became recognized with the Zionist movement and was called the Zionist flag. So Israel is created. And the, like the question that every country has, what should be our flag? And this was a question in Canada up until the 1960s. And so the most obvious choice was that Zionist flag because everyone understood it. It was behind David Ben-Gurion when he read the Declaration of Independence. But Moshe Shertok, later Moshe Sharet, who was the Minister of Foreign Affairs at the time, was worried about using that flag as the flag of the country of Israel. And his concern was, when that flag is shown outside the country, and we recognize it in our synagogues and buildings and Zionist uh, meetings of all kinds, the concern was that Jews would be uh, criticized for dual loyalty because they would be waving the flag of a separate country, a different country, the state of Israel. So the concern was to take the Zionist flag, with every, which everybody knew, and make that the flag of the state of Israel. The concern in Israel was that would give Jews outside the country um, problems because they'd be charged with dual loyalty. So a competition was initiated to come up with the alternative flag for the state of Israel. There were 164 different alternatives, but the rules of the competition were that the flag has to have two blue stripes and either one or seven stars in gold or some other color. So you can imagine the various combinations with the stripes to the left, to the right, upside down, triangles, the star in the top and the bottom. And after all this, the uh, Moshe Sh uh, Sharet said, you know what? Let's ask Jews in the diaspora what they think. Are they worried? if the Israeli flag is the Zionist flag. And the unanimous view of Jewish leadership from outside of Israel said, that's our flag. That should be the flag of the state of Israel. Let's go with that one. That's beloved, it's known, it's inspiring. That should be the flag. And that's what happened. On October 28th, 1948, the provisional government of the state of Israel, it's provisional because there hadn't been an election yet that took place early in 1949, resolved that what we know to be the flag of Israel indeed be that flag. It was published in the official Gazette on November 12th. And with that publication, November 12th, 1948, that became the flag of Israel. So were any of these designs that didn't make the cut uh, incorporated into things that still exist in other parts of the Israeli symbolism today? There was a separate competition at the time for the emblem of the state of Israel. So the emblem has the menorah, um, which was taken from the menorah in the Arch of Titus, but the flag itself, and to people who are watching, and I'll describe it, these were some of the alternatives for the flag. So what it was, was that the Zionist flag in the middle with two bigger blue stripes, or have it not white on blue, uh, not blue on white, but white on blue, or the flag to the left, to the corner, to the right in a triangle. Um, and there was another one that simply had two blue stripes and three golden stars, seven golden stars. The seven golden stars was symbolic and a connection to Herzl. And there are lots of things that maintain those seven stars. 
the Tsim uh, shipping line, its logo is seven uh, stars. If you go to the mall in Herzliya, it's the Seven Stars Mall. You, whenever you see seven stars, it is a connection to Herzl's vision expressed in the Judenstadt and the progressive idea of Israel that it would be a country that had new ideas for labor and other things, the seven hour workday. All right, and so uh, we, we should talk now about the symbolism of this flag in modern times because it is provocative in some circles. People have burned it, haters have uh, burned it or stomped on it in, um, in soccer games in, in Europe. And of course the flag controversy, the flag march in Israel is very, very fraught with tension. You know, uh, do you think that the, um, uh, the founders had any idea of how the flag would be seen in modern times today? I don't think it's this particular flag, the flag with the blue stripes and the Magen David, that is the reason for all this vitriol. It, is, it would be any flag of the state of Israel. When people are burning the flag, criticizing the flag, stomping on it, what they're, what they're saying is that the state of Israel doesn't have a right to exist because a sovereign state has a right to a flag and the flag is the symbol of the country. And so when people desecrate the flag, it is their desecration of the idea of a Jewish homeland. And so it's, it's not this particular flag, in my view, it would be any flag because the flag is the symbol of the country and the symbol of Jewish autonomy. And it's the Jewish autonomy and liberty and safety and freedom that people are criticizing when they criticize the flag. I have one question about the dual loyalty and this Zionist flag that I hadn't thought of until now. Not everyone who was an Israeli citizen supports the state of Israel as a secular state. And I'm talking about Haredis. Um, so did they, in, in your knowledge, you know, how does this flag play uh, in that, in those corners, not just in Israel, but of course in the Haredi community as well, or the Neturei Karta and things like that, because it's a Zionist flag. If you don't believe, believe in the right of the Jewish people to have a homeland, then no, any symbol of it would be um, anathema to you. And so uh, just last week, uh, I saw a video of the Naturi Karta flying the Palestinian flag in a march through Mea Sharim. In my humble view, well, I don't even, insanity. Um, and, and so if, if you don't believe in the state, that any symbol of the state, whether it's whether it's the the, the army, the the, um, the Olympic team, uh, whatever it might be, um, the in every country there's people who have issues with some of the symbols. I would in in Canada too. There are issues with our our symbols. Is does it properly reflect our our brothers in in Quebec or the other populations, the indigenous populations? Nothing can be 100% satisfactory, but um, this flag of Israel is beloved. When I see it anywhere, we all do it. When we, when we go anywhere, we see it, um, where is it, in, um, in New York at Bloomingdale's. When they fly the Israeli flag, I've been there for a couple of years, but when they fly the Israeli flag, it's a source of pride for those who love the state of Israel, seeing the flag anywhere. There's a car dealership on Dufferin uh, in Toronto that flies the Israeli flag. It's a great source of pride. And, and that's the idea of that, of that for all of us. When we see a Canadian flag, when we're traveling in another country, it's a source of pride. It's a source of connection. This flag does it. Uh, we, we need to celebrate um, the anniversary of the of the decision to use this flag. It's 73 years old, and you're going to give away some birthday press, some loot bags to our listeners. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's tell uh, tell that. Sorry, let's start again. So this Israeli flag is celebrating a birthday, and what do you do when you go to a birthday party? Usually, you give out loot bags. So uh, you're going to give out some some gifts to our listeners uh, who write into you. Um, so why don't you tell us how this is going to work? For sure. In 2010, the state of Israel issued a stamp to celebrate the flag. And I have 50 first day covers that I will give away to listeners of the daily podcast. This first day cover, so it's, it's the 
first day of issuance of the stamp, has a quote from Herzl, which should resonate based on our discussion. With the flag, one may lead people anywhere, even to the promised land, which is exactly what happened. So for the first 50 people who connect with me through my website, HerzlCollection.com, you'll see that there's a link there to reach me. If you uh, connect with me through the website with your mailing address, I will mail this to the first 50 people who respond. That's an amazing uh, gesture. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you again, as always, for your fascinating collection. And uh, we'll tell our listeners, uh, there'll be some video and some photos as well that they can see, not just the audio, uh, if you go to our website at uh, the cjn.ca and all our socials. David, thank you so, so much. My pleasure. Be well. Thank you.